Hey guys, uh, I figured I'd take some time to just show you some of the features of the newer MGuard series from Phoenix. Um, so this is our 1102. We also have a 1105 variation. These are gigabit units from Phoenix Contact and they really do two things. They can route and they have a really simple firewall. And I'll run through how that works today. Um, in comparison, here is the old interface for the uh, existing MGuard line. Uh, and I also have a PLC next here with just a little web page. So right now on my network, I have my PC, two MGuards. You can see everything here is in the same 192 subnet. So it's all just a flat subnet, nothing really fancy going on. Um, the first thing is that the password for the old one and the new one has changed. Um, the old one was uh, very specific to itself versus the new one is now uh, something where uh, it matches all of the Phoenix contact switches. Uh, so if you try to use this, this password on this, this unit, it won't work. <laughs> um, so anyway, if I kind of run through, this is again the existing MGuard interface. There's a lot of features in here, so it does a lot of extra features. It can do things like VPN and uh, advanced like deep packet inspection or uh, SIFS integrity monitor where it can monitor file systems and you know lots of these features. But this is really like for IT pro or IT experts or pro level experts, people who are very confident with their their knowledge in network security and, and routing. So like I said, lots of features in here, but at the same time, you can really get lost quickly. The new MGuard, when you look at it, it is much more simple. So you can see I still have a save and uh, back icon. You can see the time at the top, but the menus are much more simple. So you just have password to change your password, device access, uh, and so on. So when you get both of these units, both any MGuard from Phoenix, it always has the same default IP, which is nice, 192.168.1.1. Um, this new unit has a, a bunch of features, so I'm not going to compare it to the old unit anymore, so we're going to get rid of that for now. Um, but I just want to talk about how you can get into this device. So like I said, 192.168.1.1 is the default uh, IP. It has a DHCP server enabled, so you can either set yourself up statically to be in the same subnet, or you can uh, just have yourself set up to DHCP and it will give you an IP address and then you can log into the device. Um, you can access the device from either the LAN or the WAN, uh, or Zone 1 or Zone 2 as it's now called. So Zone 1 would be port 1, Zone 2 is ports 2, or if you have that 5 port unit, then it's ports 2 through 5. Um, when you go into your network, you can kind of see here it defaults so that the, the Zone 1, like basically the untrusted area, uh, is going to be DHCP. This would typically be your IT side. Zone 2, this is going to be your machine side, has the static. So I'm going to just run through here and set up uh, a quick uh, network here. So 10.10.10.1, just because that, that's what I'll use. The net mask, so this small notation is called CIDR. And if you're not familiar with it, you can actually use your regular uh, thing and it'll correct it to what it's supposed to be. Um, in our manual, we will run through what that is, but I can just show you kind of 255.255.0.0. If I do that, B slash 16. So I want it to be a 24 network, but anyway, like I said, you, you don't need to know what that means, but it'll automatically correct it for you. Um, I'm also, I have, you know, this uh, PLC right now. I'm gonna set up a quick one-to-one -one NAT. So you can see real IP. This is my PLC next, so it's 1.10. Uh, and I can show you, so this is 1.10, and I'm going to NAT this to a 10 address. So 10.10. 10.10.88 and I'll save that right now. So all I've done so far, I've added a NAT and I've set up the, the zone one. So now I can move my PC from the trusted side, the zone two, into the zone one, from the land to the land, whatever terms you want to use. Um, we're going to run through the network security, the firewall assistant, in a minute, I'm going to just start off by deleting any rules. So there's no rules in here. Uh, time and date, it has its own time server. I'm not connected to the internet right now, so that's not going to work. Under support, you know, there's there's just not that many tools here. to ping and TCP dump. So it's a really, you can see there's not a lot of features. It's really hard to get lost in the weeds. 
So first thing I'm going to do, I am going to uh, just change my computer's IP address. Uh, this is obviously done intentionally. I have to just change myself to that 10 subnet. Um, so I'm just going to make my, my computer now 10.10.10.111. Uh, and the, the reason why is that I'm then going to physically move the port that I'm plugged into to go to the WAN, right? And I, I'm just doing this as an example to show you, okay, I have a system where I have a PLC and a PC, and the PC wants to reach that PLC, right? And they're on different sides of this, this router. How can that work? Uh, so just give me a second here as I slide some cables around. And if I did everything right, it's going to be very simple because I can open up a new tab and type in the new IP address. So 10.10.10.1. And there we go, login. So again, this address no longer works, obviously, because I just moved myself this 10.10.192.168. doesn't work anymore because, again, I, I physically moved my PC to a different network. When you're setting this up, you might have... Uh, you know, your network is probably going to be set up already, so you won't need to move things back and forth like I am. Admin. Private. Uh, and here we go. So now we're going to run through the, uh, the firewall assistant. So you can see here, I have a firewall, no rules, assistant. So if I click on start and click on yes, you can see here the firewall assistant has been activated. So at this point, if you remember, I did that NAT, so 10.10.10.88, I think I made it. Uh, and there is the same HMI. So what happens here, this firewall assistant basically allows all traffic when it's running, and then it will log that traffic for me and automatically add it to my rules. So you can kind of see that's now running. There's other web pages on here as well, like there's a WBM, there's lots of little links in here that you can get to. Uh, I hit stop, and it's going to say, yeah, it's going to be moved. So now it's stopped, and you can see here, this 111, which was my PC, going to the, the PLC, 192.168.110. On port 443, this is HTTPS, is allowed. So that now works. If I were to open up another utility like PowerShell, or the command prompt or whatever, and try to ping this unit, dot uh, 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot uh, 88 it will fail so when this firewall assistant is active it opens up the firewall and then it basically records all the traffic and then says anything that's coming through is good uh, and then you can click stop and it'll obviously stop the traffic and then it moves everything in there so the idea here you can set up your machine you can run it for you know an hour 10 minutes however long you need to get everything communicating once you know it's all good you stop it, uh, and then uh, then all the firewall rules get added, and at that point, you're done your security setup. So it's pretty incredible because the network basically builds the firewall rules for you, and now any any you know new things don't work. So you have to think of it as like starting from a known good image, right? So you're gonna start set everything up. Once you have your image that you know is good, you just leave it like like that forever, and at that point, you can save and you can forget about this device. So thanks for listening to me. That was a really quick demo on setting up a NAT. Um, so again, I'll just jump back to the NAT so you can kind of see it. Uh, and then the firewall rules. So the firewall rules, like I said, you don't really do anything. It's as simple as it can get. On the NAT, I just used real IP. That was what my IP address of my PLC was. And I translated it to 10.10.10.88. Uh, to so setting up a NAT and a firewall in less than 10 minutes. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.